Today we're going to go over the entire collection of fragrances from the house of Goldfield & Banks. Uh, recently, Dimitri from Goldfield & Banks was at ZGO Perfumery and he did an event. And he had a long discussion about his brand. We're going to cut to that video after the outro. It's very long and you can cut through it with uh, timestamps. But we're going to do an entire rank list here of the fragrances. And we're going to find out how Jessica ranks the collection as well. Those will be time stamped as well. So if you're curious to learn about Goldfield & Banks and also hear what uh, Jessica thinks about the fragrances, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. This is Jessica. How are you doing? Happy to be here. Yeah? Yeah. What do you think about Goldfield & Banks? Oh, I love it. I think it's a really cool line. Um, it's unique in that it's, you know, I think Australia's only fine fragrance house. Okay. I think, right? Am I right on that? Um, There's a few others. Okay. They're okay. smaller, but they're yeah, kind of... Yeah, most ma predominant. Yeah, they're they're um, making it out there. Yeah, so I think that it brings Australia to the forefront in a way that maybe we don't otherwise get in fragrance. And I love his use of materials. Um, also, they're very fresh, kind of um, luxurious, but also very approachable. Mm -hmm. There's a, they're also pretty priced pretty nicely, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah I feel so. I always feel comfortable recommending the line to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a good way. I, I don't really have a desire to travel to Australia, so I think I feel like with these fragrances, and maybe I will one day, I don't want to say never, but I feel like I'm traveling to Australia mm. with these fragrances because mm -hmm. they're using native ingredients. Not the entire fragrances are composed with native ingredients, but they'll have one or two or three in a fragrance and it comes from a specific region. So I feel like we travel to uh, Australia with the fragrances rather than taking a, you know, paying for a flight to go all the way to Australia because it's a long flight as well mm. from here in San Francisco. I think it's like 15 and a half, 16 hours. So yeah, we can just smell the fragrances and feel like we're in Australia, I feel like. So. Yeah, well, I definitely want to go to Australia. So this is like my little pre-trip, I guess. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe one day you'll go. Maybe I'll go too. But Maybe we'll, we'll we can see. go at the same time. Okay, <laughs> we should. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off at number 11. Um, I like this brand a lot. In fact, there's a few fragrances that I really, really love from this brand. But unfortunately, I, I can't seem to like this particular fragrance fragrance. It just does not work for me. Uh, it's white sandalwood and it features notes of white sandalwood, thyme, amber, rose, peppers, and saffron or pepper and saffron. So what do you think about white sandalwood? Well, from a sales standpoint, I, I feel like this is something I really enjoy showing to people. Okay. It's approachable. It's light. It's something that they can wear to work or like during the day running errands. People don't always want a really strong fragrance. So I think that, um, almost medicinal quality can work for it in we were talking about this fragrances off camera I, I told Jessica that this is a bit medicinal and I feel like it's sandalwood and thyme together because for me I always associate sandalwood with a medicinal touch to begin with and with that thyme combined with it it just comes off very medicinal and sharp on me. Yeah, yeah, I think that's definitely something. If, if fragrances come off sharp on your skin, this is going to be sharper. Mm -hmm. For people that maybe turn things sweeter, they might get less of that element. Yeah. I like it as a fragrance, too. Um, okay. It's not my go-to, but I, I don't, I, you know, for me, it's number seven. Oh, okay. For you, it's number seven on the yeah. list. Yeah. For me, it's number 11, uh, and... Uh, I wanted to love it, but I just can't seem to get into it. But moving on to number 10, Blue Cypress. I enjoy this one a lot more than White Sandalwood, but sadly, since it is a ranked list, it's ending up at number 10 because I enjoy the other fragrances a lot more. So it's Blue Cypress, Lavender, Patchouli, Clove, and Star Anise. So it's got aromatics, it's got some spices, definitely has some earthy edge to it from the patchouli as well. And I like the whole addition of that Star Anise to give it a little light greenish uh, booziness to the fragrance. So that's mm -hmm. Blue Cypress. What do you think about Blue Cypress? Um, I think it's a nice everyday freshie. Okay. Um, it's, you consider it a, a woody freshie? Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. This is something, uh, maybe not as light as the other, a couple of the other ones we'll talk about, but as far as a fragrance goes, I think this one's very refreshing. Um, but it does, you know, the lavender patchouli, it's going to have more of that aromatic. The clove pops out. Uh, so far, it's something I've found that most of the clients enjoy. Okay, cool. Blue Cypress at number 10. Uh, next, going to... Velvet Splendor. So Velvet Splendor is, for me, about mimosa, 
but in Australia they call it wattle. wattle. From what I remember, Dimitri has told me, he's told me many times. In fact, actually, you know what, come to think of it, Dimitri had come to my studio back in 2019 in my former or my previous studio and we shot a video together about Velvet Splendor. You can uh, go catch that video and then he'll mention this in the video I'll attach to this, uh, the, the, this actual uh, ranked video. But this is Mandarin Orange, Hedion, Mimosa, Orange Blossom, Jasmine, Sambac, Sandalwood and Patchouli. So it's definitely floral, it's powdery, it's more floral balm to me. Mm -hmm. Lots of flowers uh, and the orange blossom in here does have a bit of a citrusy edge to it. So what do you think? about it this is not my favorite it's not your it's favorite too much of a floral balm for me okay um it's also very powdery it, the powdery is also um, you know i only have a few select powdery fragrances that i really 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 click with mm -hmm. so whenever i spray this one um it's just it's not my favorite okay yeah makes sense you don't like powdery fragrances in general depends maybe perhaps no Okay. Yeah, I think maybe not. Maybe that's a general you're not a powdery, role. You're not a powdery fragrance person. Yeah, there are a few that I that totally break that rule though. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, makes sense. All right, moving on to the next fragrance at number eight. This is Desert Rosewood. So, I do always have to say, this is the first fragrance I reviewed from Goldfield and Banks. In fact, probably I was one of the very first people that reviewed any fragrances from this house on YouTube. You can probably go search and you'll find my video at the oldest. Uh, I do like this fragrance a lot, but as I said, this is a rank list of this whole entire brand and it's ended up at the bottom because I like the other, uh, more at the bottom because I like the other fragrances more. So, but Desert Rosewood is Desert Rosewood with Mandarin Orange, Cardamom, Vanilla, Benzoin, and Patchouli. It does have an ambery touch. It does have an orangey presence and it's not rose. It's just Desert Rosewood. So it's got a very woody experience here. Uh, what yeah. do you think about it? Yeah, it is woody, but it also has a nice, um, it's, it's, it's a bit softer than that. I like, one, I like the name a lot. It gives me a lot of imagination. I don't know what it is about it, but it's Desert Rosewood. What mm. is a Desert Rosewood? Yeah, what is it? I don't know, but I think that it, it, it intrigues me just the same. I always feel like Desert Rosewood might be kind of similar to Labdanum, maybe hmm. maybe uh, Rock Rose, Yeah, kind of, sort of, I don't know, but uh, it's a beautiful fragrance. It's definitely very ambery in the dry down, and this is the color I, I visualize with this fragrance. Moving on to number seven, it's Sunset Hour. This is cocktails in a bottle. It's very sparkling and effervescent and uh, very fun and playful, I think. It does also have a very young touch to it and it does lean feminine, but it's desert peach, which is Quandong, raspberry, jasmine, sambac, ginger, pink pepper, sandalwood, cashmere wood, and benzoin. What do you think about Sunset Hour? Okay, so personal experience is that this one is one I can't help but overspray. I absolutely love it. And you absolutely I, love this. And I'm not like a huge, huge gourmands girl to begin with, but this one, I love how playful it is. But, um, and also it does lean more femme, but I think it also comes out like peachy, buttery, leathery in some oh. many ways. And I've found that have just as many men interested in this fragrance, if not more than women. I think I've sold this to more men than women. Interesting. So that's been my experience with it. I think it, it's, it uplifts me. It feels very comforting. It definitely feels playful and cocktaily, yes, but not in a syrupy sort of way. Mm -hmm. It is uplifting. I, yeah. I agree with that. It has that effervescent, it's sparkliness that kind of wakes up your senses. Mm -hmm. um, and it just puts me in a like a vacation mode. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what's having nice cocktails about it. with this kind of like ocean breeze or sea breeze nearby that's Somewhere hitting you. Really warm. But you're in a very swanky hotel bar, mm -hmm. and uh, you know there's these drapes that are like kind of blowing uh, against the door or something or some window or something. That's what I visualize with this one. It's yeah. very breezy. A little transportation out of San Francisco, like a warm breezy instead yeah. of a. Yeah. Chilly breezy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So Sunset Hour at number seven. And then um, at number six, it's Pacific Rock Moss, this one right here. And this is probably the fragrance that put this brand on the map, Pacific Rock Moss. 
Um, so it for me, there's no mention of beachy notes in this particular fragrance, but it has a beachy vibe to it, even though they have coastal moss, lemon, sage, geranium, and cedar wood. But for me, it acts like a beachy marine fragrance, which is quite pleasant. It's also not overwhelming. It's a bit subdued. It's more of a skin scent for me, mm -hmm. um, but I like the way it smells. Yeah, I agree. What do you think about it? I get a lot of the moss in this one. You do? But I think that that lemon and the sage kind of make it a bit more aromatic. Um, I didn't get too much geranium, to be honest. Cedar, yes, but I really get a lot of moss. Moss, uh -huh. but in a very, It's mossy. But in a very fresh way. Okay. It's not in a deep moss. It's it's very like something you would imagine on, on the beach wearing and mm. going for a walk fresh okay no it's a very pleasant fragrance for me it's very beachy as I said and also I've mentioned this quite a bit uh, these two layered together it's a uh, Pacific Rock Moss and Sunset Hour oh man it is a magical layering combination Ooh. you've got to try it Oh, I'm going to. It smells super fantastic I'm absolutely obsessed with those two and the fragrances are a bit on the light side so you do have to overspray them but the two together intensifies mm -hmm. makes for a very a uh, pleasant wearing experience where it puts you on a vacation, like an island uh, getaway. Uh, you've got the beachy experience, but you're also having cocktails on the beach. So you think that the Pacific Rock Moss makes the sunset hour maybe more like moderate in sweetness, perhaps? Yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It complements one another. The sparkliness kind of maybe goes down a little bit. It's less sparkly because there's definitely a creamy creaminess with the Pacific Rock Moss. I feel like it's like like a almost like suntan lotion creamy. Mm, yeah. mm -hmm. So the combination together is really beautiful. Oh, I really love it. I'm gonna have to try that. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> All right moving on to the next fragrance at number five it's Southern Bloom. So Southern Bloom is a floral balm. It's a bit powdery and also a bit fruity as well. And I really like the way this one smells because I like this kind of fruitiness contrasted with lots of this floral touch. It, it features notes of baronia and I believe that's the, the southern bloom they're referring to, baronia. But it also has jasmine, cassis, sandalwood, vetiver, ylang ylang, coconut, and iris. So the combination's a bit tropical, definitely fruity, and of course a very, very floral and powdery. So what do you think about southern bloom? Not my favorite. Okay. It's, it's not, I don't know, I don't have that same experience with it. Maybe it's the powdery. I think that the vetiver comes out and kind of overtakes. For me, it's not one that resonates. It's, Interesting. It's a good fragrance, but I haven't felt like that's one that I've really, like, connected Connect with. with. Okay. Yeah. Do you also get a bit of a fruity makeup vibe with this? Let me check. It um, comes off like a makeup-y mm -hmm. smell. Is that from the iris? Do you think maybe that's the iris and the lang lang maybe combined? Maybe, yeah, yeah. maybe, yeah. Yeah, so number five, Southern Bloom. I really like it. Um, tastes are different. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> so number four though, it's Wood Infusion. Wood Infusion I feel like is a very easy to wear oud and orange combo. It may, I think if you have a problem with oud, even Western oud, and I feel like this is Western oud and it's not a Middle Eastern oud, but you, you, you like to make it easier to wear. I feel like the sweet orange in this particular fragrance tones down the oudiness of this fragrance. It makes it more for a, a, a woods combo with oud rather than just oud in your face. Mm -hmm. But it's exotic woods, sweet orange, iris, agarwood, lavender, patchouli, musk, and amber. What do you like about uh, wood infusion? Ah, this one, um, it has a woodsy depth to it, but then the mm -hmm. orange gives it a bit of that the sparkle. I don't get too much of the iris. Um, okay. I th love the lavender, the patchouli. This one has the the creaminess of a of a of a beautiful woods blend, which you know a lot of wood fragrances that are heightened that feature woods get very creamy. Mm -hmm. But then this one is very aromatic and a bit more fresh. So you get the best of both. I okay. Feel. I, yeah. I, I can see yeah. this. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, and it really this one kind of surprises me. It, I feel like it would be one that you would feel like you smelled and you've you know you kind of would know it already, but I do feel like once you get it on the skin, it hits this nice middle note. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wood infusion at number four. At number three is 
bohemian lime. Such a beautiful sparkling citrus fragrance. I really love it. It's perfect in the heat, but it features notes of Australian finger lime, coriander, Haitian vetiver, cedar wood, and sandalwood. For me, I feel like there's ginger in here, and I feel like it wears like you're wearing a Moscow Mule cocktail. So if you like the way that smells, it's very cool and ice cold here. That's the experience I get with this one. It's I, delicious. Yeah, I think that's about right. I think also, too, just on the citruses, I do... Um, the the finger lime has such a unique scent like lime I, is my favorite of all the citruses mm. and each citrus has such a unique scent to it that you don't really notice until you start smelling them in different fragrances okay and i feel like this one just does lime uh, you know justice it's justice. An, an ode to lime okay Cool, but it is finger lime. You do know that, right? Yeah, it's not like a regular lime. It's that I know. funky looking finger lime. I know. I lime. have a finger lime. Caviar on lime at home right now <laughs> on my kitchen table. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do love lime. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes for my la salad dressings, I use lime juice instead of lemon juice. Ooh, yeah, it's, it's softer. Yeah, it is. Softer. Totally, it's not mm -hmm. as tart. Moving on to number two, it's purple suede. I had to put purple suede here because I think it's a nicely done suede leather it's buttery but it's got lots of aromatics in it as well so the notes are leather wood leather lavender cardamom raspberry amber extreme pink pepper and patchouli if you like the idea of leathers this is definitely a great scent it's definitely a little different than something like tuscan leather even though it'll remind you of tuscan leather the aromatics of lavender really shines and i've mentioned in my review that it reminds me of wearing leather walking through the herb markets in the south of france because lavender just really kind of is cranked up in here but there is definitely a fruitiness but what do you think about this um i'm i'm really excited about this one i think that it's uh they launched it as a summer lavender suede um uh and i think that this is going to be a beautiful winter fragrance uh -huh, I think because so. it's so rich and sumptuous. That mm -hmm. lavender is very deep and creamy. It's not what you expect either from all of those mm -hmm. notes. Yeah. And um, I think it's f unique. I don't think there's many other fragrances that smell quite like this. Okay. It's, you know, maybe more... Yeah, I think I think it's a really unique fragrance. Okay. And I'm excited about showing this one to people and wearing it myself. Yeah. Do you think it was launched at a time when people would not be wearing fragrances like this because launched in the summer time because it was yeah. just at the beginning of summer it hadn't even turned summer when this launched it was june 1st when it launched i remember yes because i reviewed it just on the day it launched yes but i think now that we're getting into winter people will be more into gravitating yeah. towards fragrances like this when it was launched my first impression was this is going to make an amazing winter fragrance okay mm -hmm. cool yeah i agree all right purple 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 <laughs> purple purple suede at number two and you guessed it, if you know this brand and you know my taste, uh, Silky Woods is at number one. It's Tahitian vanilla with agar wood or oud with cinnamon, tobacco leaves, ylang ylang, sandalwood, and incense for a super delicious vanilla balm with the kind of tobacco-ish touches which are light. The, the agar wood is also kind of light. For me, it's mostly a very spicy vanilla. Mm -hmm. A bit syrupy, a bit dry together, but definitely powdery. Light smoke runs throughout it as well from incense. What do you get from this? Oh gosh, you know, I love the combo of the agar wood and the sandal wood. I get a lot of those two, surprisingly, because everything else is pretty strong, but mm -hmm. I really pick through the notes and I get a lot of that oud, but it's kind of a lighter oud. It's almost like a sparkly. I love the sandal wood and that tobacco leaves mixture. I get a lot of the vanilla, obviously, you know, and that incense kind of kicks in a little bit towards the middle. Mm. Um, but I just get this beautiful, balanced fragrance that's a bit gourmand, a bit fresh, a bit oody. Um, you know, I forgot to mention boozy. There's definitely a booziness here. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. Um, I think it's a very, it's a very rich fragrance. Mm -hmm. And whenever, you know, you just spray it on and it's instantly delicious. Very much so. Yeah. Anyway, Sil Silky Woods deserves the number one spot. But what we're going to do now is find out how jessica would rank this list now that you know my ranked list so i put white sandalwood at 11 what would you put at 11. southern bloom okay so you really don't care for southern bloom i can't say it's caught on to me quite yet okay but i'll give it some time yeah so at number 10 i put blue cypress what did you put at number 10 velvet splendor okay <laughs> 
<laughs> We're kind of close here. Because I put Velvet Splendor at number nine. Okay. And what did you put at number nine? Blue Cypress. <laughs> Okay, that's good. So we reversed it. Yeah, yeah. That's good. All right, now that we got those out of the way, well, I put at number eight, Desert Rosewood. Mm, Pacific Rock Moss. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. At uh, number, wait, so Desert Rosewood, and I put um, at number seven, Sunset Hour. Ah. Wait. Wait. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Sunset Hour at uh, number seven. And what did you put at number seven? White Sandalwood. Okay. Well, yeah. you really like that one. More than uh, I do. I guess, yeah. No, well, I do like it more than you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. But you, you know, you like Southern Bloom more than I do. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that works. Strange. Yeah. Um, and then at number six, I put Pacific Rock Moss. Mm. What did you put at number six? Desert Rosewood. Okay. We're kind of close in the ballpark. Sort of, kind of, sort of. It's like a little bit, but different. The, yeah, a little bit diff different. Okay, so at number five, I put Southern Bloom. Um, oh, I have Purple Suede. Okay. At number four, I have Wood Infusion. Mm, Bohemian Lime. Okay. At number three, I have Bohemian Lime. I have Wood Infusion. Okay. <laughs> cool. At number two, I've got Purple Suede. Mmm, Silky Woods. Okay. And I got that number one, Silky Woods. Sunset Hour. There we go. Makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. It makes sense. There's a, there's a theme. There's a thread. There is a thread. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed our ranking of the Goldfield & Banks fragrances. I do want to say they have a new fragrance coming out that I did smell. It's called Island Lush. It is. It is uh, really, really nice. I smelled it on uh, a few people at the event when uh, Dimitri came. But it doesn't smell like what you think it's named. So I do want to, um, you know, tell you that. So I think it's launching as an exclusive to Harrods. We have to find out a little bit more about that. Yeah, there's going to be some exclu exclusivity on it, and mm -hmm. then it'll get a, a wider release. Mm -hmm. But looking forward to that. I've also smelled something else from the brand, and I'm looking forward to that as well. Um, some good stuff is coming out. But either way, thanks so much for watching today. Thanks so much for coming here to Thank do this you. video, Jessica. If you guys have any questions or comments, please list below. Do want to let you know that there is a discount code for ZGO mm -hmm. Perfumery. Uh, you can take advantage of it. It's 15% off of uh, most fragrances from the store. There are a few exclusions, but it definitely works on Goldfield and Banks. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye. Bye. But don't forget Dimitri after the outro. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. appreciate your being here. It's a, it's a brand that we've had for a few years now <coughs> at our store ZGO. And uh, it's a brand that's really, I've seen it growing, taking off, people are loving it. And just having so many people here, you know, it's telling us, yeah, there's fans here. Dimitri has a lot of fans, a lot of people love Dimitri's brand. And so he's here personally to tell us all about it. And so, um, so yeah, we're just excited to have you. Yeah, so, no, that's thank fantastic. You. Thank you so, thank so you much for that. Um, I'm just going to also let you know, just informational, that today we're having a 10% off on the Goldfield and Banks. Uh, for the people who registered, you're getting a discovery set. Uh, so we have those up here for you. If you yes. didn't already get one, please get one. We're going to be passing around a sign-in sheet, so just sign in and let us know that you are here. Um, if you're guests, you can register to our email list and, and that way we can tell you about future events. And uh, I just also wanted to introduce you to our staff. We've got Jessica. Where's Jessica here? Hi, Hi Jessica. Hi, Jessica. Don't be shy, Jessica. <laughs> Super knowledgeable and helpful Jessica. Fantastic. Super knowledgeable and helpful Joshua in the back over there. Yes. Woo! Yes. Yay. <laughs> And my partner, Tiny, he's ah. serving champagne over there. Yeah, hello. That's a very important function there, Champ champagne. Everybody should have a glass by now, or sparkling, sparkling water. We tried to get like an accompanying dish from Australia, but 
I honestly couldn't think of something from Australia to eat. You, you got root burger, alligator stew, <laughs> kangaroo stew. Exactly. We ended up with baklava. I hope it's okay. Kangaroo is white as actually like that. Oh, really? Okay. Less yeah. I'm glad to try that. Yeah, doesn't yeah. come out of my mouth anyway. Good. So. So, so, so Dimitri, um, I think uh, how we're going to do this is I'm going to ask you a few questions just to kind of like get the ball rolling here. And they're just pretty basic questions. And then I'm going to turn it over to you and you're going to do the little class. So the first question I have. Who the heck is Goldfield and who the heck is Banks? <laughs> Which well, banks behind it? It's not a bank because when I initially started Goldfield and Banks in twenty end of twenty sixteen, one of the first you know when you start a new company and then all of a sudden you get inquiries on info at goldfieldandbanks.com with people asking questions. One of the first questions came from America. Is this is this a perfume from a bank? That was the first question. So no it's not. So um it actually has a beautiful story, Goldfield and Banks. Um, it took me more than a year to come up with the name because I wanted to... You know, Goldfield and Banks is all about um, what we call in French, parfumerie du terroir. It's perfumery from the land. When you think of Australia, our luxury is nature. And um, we don't have all these fancy things that we have, you know, here and in Paris and in New York. And, and all of that, but we have nature, we have lots of nature, and we have incredible ingredients, amazing raw ingredients that are native to Australia, some of them are not native to Australia. But the reason why I'm telling you this story is that we have one ingredient that is an icon, and that is basically in every single fragrance here in the store, and it's sandwood. And I don't know if you know, but today sandwood, whether it is the Indian sandwood or the Santalum album, or the Australian sandwood, Spicatum, both species are growing in Western Australia. So today, any, every fragrance that you have here in the store, if they have sandalwood, it will definitely come from Australia. And the great thing is that the tree, in order for the tree to grow in the country, you need gold in the soil. Hence the name Goldfields. There you go. And then banks, here is my, my good friend, Joseph Banks. So Joseph Banks was a scientist, botanist, who in the 18th century came to the South Pacific. And after a few years of traveling and discovering wonderful things in the South Pacific region, went back to England with more than 33,000 species of plants. And um, so he was basically the first person to go back to Europe and to show the Europeans what a, a eucalyptus looked like or how mimosa smelled like, or because people in, in those days in Europe, I mean, all of that was quite exotic. So um, this is my way of paying a tribute to the work of Joseph Banks, because this man is very important in England, and he still is in Australia. And, um, and it's, again, it's all about nature and about ingredients. Hanson and Goldfield and Banks. Voilà. Okay, great answer. OK, <laughs> question number two. Um, Everybody arrives to understanding perfume, to their passion of perfume, a different way. What was your path to getting a passion for perfume? How, how did you get started? Oh dear, oh my god, I think I must have been six or seven years old when I was already choosing my mother's fragrances. So, back then, um, I chose my mom's fragrances and even at school, my teachers would come to me and ask me, do I smell nice? Which fragrance should I wear? Um, and also, I remember at around when I was 9 or 10, at school, with the teachers, we were already swapping samples, like little samples. And I was little, and you know what, a sample of Chanel No. 5, or Coco, whatever, Youth Dew by Estee Lauder, or whatever. It was, yeah, I know. And I was in heaven. I was in heaven, and I always wanted to work in fragrances, and I studied arts, which had nothing to do with fragrances. And I, I ended up doing what I wanted to do, and it's perfumes. Like, yeah, I mean, I've been working in this industry for 29 years. So. Yeah, which makes me 29 today. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah. That's very, that's very interesting. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, my, my third question is, 
how did you start the brand? I mean, how, how did you get it going as far as business-wise and coming up with the scents? How, how, what is your development process like? Right. Very good question. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if I, would st if I would do it all over again today. Um, you know, when you get closer to your 50, I mean, things are a little bit more challenging, you know, physically. Um, but um, I think... Um, I mean, obviously I had backgrounds in fragrances and I've worked in this industry. I, I had a privilege of working with amazing brands all over the world, based up, uh, in, in, uh, in Europe, and um, working with Tom Ford and Cartier and Isemiyake, Serge Lutens, we just mentioned. Um, so I knew a lot about the industry. And how I started, to, to be very honest, I didn't have those big budgets that a lot of other brands have. I, I, started very humble with 20,000 euros, that's all I had, and I, had, and I thought, you know what, 20,000 euros, that's my budget, um, because I didn't want to put all my eggs in one basket, I mean, moving to the other side of the world, it's a big risk, going to Australia and all that, so I had 20,000 euros and I thought, okay, this will have to, this is my budget and I'm going to start with that, and if it works with $20,000, and if after one year I can pay myself a wage, then I'm, I'm doing a good job. And, and that's what I did. So that's how I actually started. So I, I really literally worked on my own for the first three years, and you remember that very well, um, until the brand was growing so fast. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, one of the things that I did is uh, I was very fortunate in, in Australia to be surrounded by French people. Obviously, when it comes to fragrances and when it comes to crafting and uh, uh, expertise and savoir-faire knowledge, then you have to have the French expertise or at least the Italian expertise to make fragrances. And I was really fortunate that in Australia there were a few people around there that um, I could, um, I could um, work with and, and they were able to create my fragrances. One of them is a perfumer. He's a fifth generation perfumer from Grasse. And he's the teacher of a lot of perfumers of some of your fragrances. He's based in Melbourne, lived there for many years. So that was a blessing. Um, and then little by little, um, just, yeah, I mean, traveling a lot making contacts with suppliers and, and uh, farmers because I was very much into Australian native ingredients because that's what we do, Australian ingredients, um, and getting their trust because a lot of people were looking at me thinking, what's this guy doing, what does he want, you know? Um, and yeah, so, so little by little creating the first fragrances and then started in Australia, started online, a few stores, and then one of my first stores back then was Barney's overseas. So and then, and then, yeah, go from there. We go from there. So, and, and now you're all over the world. Not all over the world, but we are in forty countries. Forty is, countries. That's a good part of the world. Yeah. <laughs> forty countries. Okay. Um, is there anything you could see as far as trends, like people in Asia, like one particular scent ah. versus people in Europe versus America? Well, there's one trend that I can see is obviously for perfume or fragrances is, is very personal. I mean, what I like, you might not like, and there's, there's not a place to judge in a perfumery because it's very, I mean, it's very personal. However, what I found in, in the perfume industry, working in this field for so many years, is that it's probably the least diverse industry. Um, when you think about fashion, you have fashion brands from all over the world. Every single country has fashion. Every <coughs> single country has skincare, has makeup. Um, and I found fragrances, and I mean, and I'm French, uh, Belgian, and I mean, fragrances has always been so dull in the last few years. And I just think now that there is a little bit of a, uh, there is hope that there are more countries coming up with fragrances. Mm. And, and yeah, and I think with what I've done with Goldfield and Banks, creating a fragrance brand out of Australia, it opened up a lot of doors. And a lot of people were like, oh my God, this brand from Australia. You know, like you go so far. Um, and, I'm, and I'm hoping to see one day a brand from Africa, an amazing colorful brand, a brand from, from China, a brand from, I don't know, any, any country. And I feel that today customers in general and media is more open to embrace a more diverse perfumery. That's sort of the trend. Yeah. That's really exciting. Okay. Well, 
Thanks for putting Australia in the perfume map. So with, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you for the master class portion of the event. Okay. All right, all right. Do, can, can you come closer? Because I see there's a lot of faces that I would like to see, but I can't see everyone. And I like to have a bit of a view. There's some chairs here, by the way. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Right, so by the way, um, I'm a little bit deaf on one side of my ear, so I speak a bit strange, I guess. Um, that's from the plane, unfortunately. That's from, where is Nicola? He's making me travel here. so much. All the dollars? <laughs> No, I want some water. I was just saying that you make me travel so rather than going here. Thanks. Okay. You're welcome. This is Nicola, by the way. <laughs> He's our fabulous uh, distributor for, um, I was going to say Australia, America. <laughs> so anyway, so actually um, with uh, Claude, we have already a little bit of, of the, the background of, uh, of Goldfield and Banks. Um, oh my God, where do I start? There's so much to tell. So anyway, so I think what I, what I mentioned is Australian natives. Um, the reason why I created Goldfield and Mengs, and this is probably a question that Claude didn't ask, but it's the most important one, is why did you create an Australian fragrance brand? And you know what? I'm going to be very honest with you. Merci. I did not want to create a fragrance brand. I mean, I had a fabulous life working for all these amazing brands. I traveled in the best conditions, business class, first class, now I travel in economy. Um, so I had, a, I had an amazing life. I mean, I, I've had so many experiences and so many things in this industry, in this fabulous industry. And so a lot of people during my career were asking me, like, why don't you create your own brand? And I was like, no, why? I mean, look, so many, and all, all these brands are all French, you know, French, and another French brand, and another one. So why would I create a French brand? But when I went to Australia, one of my um, brands that I was working with, they sent me to Sydney to host a press conference for the launch of a new perfume, and I was very excited to go to Australia. And one of the first things I did was to run into a department store and to ask one of the beauty prices to show me some Australian perfumes or brands. The only brand that I could think of was Aesop or Jurelic Skincare. And that girl told me that day, she said, you know what, we don't have perfumes in Australia. And I'm like, what do you mean? You have all these ingredients, you know, you have finger lime, you have blue cypress, and you have desert peach, and you have lavender, you know, native local lavender, you have mosses, you have wattle, you have the most amazing ingredients. So it's impossible that that country doesn't have any fragrances. And, um, and that's the, that, that was the moment when I actually started thinking about maybe I should do something about that because that would be a gap in the market and at least it would be something unique. It's not another French brand, but that would be the first Australian fragrance brand featuring and using Australian native ingredients. So that is, um, that's when it all started. So, and that is next year, it's going to be 10 years. Wow. 10 years that I had the idea. And then we launched the Goldfield and Banks about six years ago at the end of the year in, in uh, December. So, um, and then of course, I mean, those Australian natives, I, was, I started looking up um, what, what varieties we have and, and um, of course I, I work with a company that produces a lot of skincare for Aesop and a lot of their ingredients, a lot of their essential oils. I have access to a lot of farmers and suppliers that have their, their oils. And, um, and one of, the, one of the, those oils that is, that is very, very important is um, sandalwood. And I, like I mentioned before, the sandalwood from Western Australia, and I really want you to smell this sandalwood. So I don't know, you could not, if you could just... Because there's a beautiful story to tell about this sandalwood. So this one is an, an, an uh, Australian native sandalwood species where the profits are shared between an, um, an indigenous community and a traditional, let's say, Australian 
uh, company. So they created the company together with an indigenous family where the, the profits are, are shared between those two, those, those two parties and where we use a very high-grade oil that comes from parts in Western Australia where you would never go. It's very hard to get there. You need to get on a plane from Sydney, it's five hours, and then you go to Calgary, which is another, another hour, and then you take a helicopter and then you go to those wonderful fields of gold where you find all this sandalwood. This company is called Duchan. And what's incredible is that Duchan has a lot of uh, sandalwood that is, um, how do I say that? A lot of those trees were naturally, they died naturally in the desert. And so they take the trees, the dead trees, the dead logs, and they harvest, and uh, sorry, they uh, chop them up and distill the oil from these naturally dyed trees. Some of those trees are 300 years old, 400 years old, and of course this gives different grades of oils, and also this company is also funded by the estate oil companies. So they make sure that you know, everything is controlled by the government, that there is sufficient funds and sufficient money to cover, because it's very, very expensive to produce that oil. And I really wanted you to, 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 to smell it, and, and this is its very natural way of smelling it. Um, so this is the, 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 the base, I would say. Sandalwood is present in all my fragrances, and I really want that, because it's, it's so earthy. I mean, it's, it's rich, it's noble, it's elegant, and it's earthy. And then you know what? With sandalwood, there is so much you can do. You can create citrus fragrances, floral, gourmands, um, um, ambery fragrances, as they call them today, um, or, or anything. So this is the basic. One of the other ingredients, and I really want you to, to, to smell them, and you can open them. One of them is baronia. Have you ever heard of baronia flowers? You have, of course. <laughs> so, Bronia flowers. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention that the sandalwood that you were just smelling was used for the very first time in 1974 in opium by, the, by Saint Laurent. And it was the first brand to highlight an Australian uh, woody note in the perfume world, which was the native sandalwood from Australia. So, and ever since this know it became very popular in the perfume world. Baronia, the one that you are smelling um, right now, it's this tiny little flower. It blossoms in September. Hi, good evening. It blossoms in September um, and it is harvested in early October, so in, in this period of, of, of uh, the year. This is when actually all the farmers come together, they sell their crops in Tasmania. It's a tiny little island in the south of the country. All the um, the, um, the farmers come together, they sell their crops to a company called Essential Oils of Tasmania, and then the production takes place. And the production, the distillation takes place right after the harvest. That's when you keep things very pure, very pretty, very beautiful, and um, it takes only 10 days. That's it. So very short supply, not, not much um, oil, because this is a very high grade absolute, what we call it absolute. Um, and we are very fortunate that today we are one of the only companies in the fragrance industry to use this, um, this oil in its pure form in Southern Bloom. And it was used for the very first time in 1964 by Dior for Diorissimo. So you can imagine, back then they were already exploring some of those beautiful exotic ingredients from Australia. But of course, I mean, as things go, they find substitutes because there's only a small amount of ingredients available. And so they had to find substitutes. So the reason why I'm showing you these ingredients and, and why I want, I want you to smell them is that they are so different than all these traditional ingredients that you have in the perfume world. We all know how roses smell and we all know how jasmine smells. But do you know how a blue cypress smells like, or a veronia flower? So that's what Goldfield and Banks is all about. So we have a finger lime or caviar lime, it's the one that this gentleman is holding. Um, have you ever heard of it? Yeah. Finger lime? Yeah. Okay. Recently. When you actually can, when you when you find it in a in a, in a, a deli store, it's perfect to use in a gin and tonic. Mm -hmm cut them in half, and those little pearls, 
you add them into a gin and tonic, it is absolutely beautiful. It's a bit, it's a bit acidic, exactly. Uh, it's salty, a bit um, zingy, like Sebastian always says, zingy. Um, <laughs> and citrusy, of course. So, and it was used in Bohemian lime. So we have two collections in both London banks. We have one collection called the Native Collection. All the fragrances are in transparent bottles and they all express different parts of the country from the ocean to um, the, the Kwandong shrubs to the desert and we have the mangroves and then we have, you know, we have a lot of elements in Australia, a lot of colors. It's a very colorful country. So this, this collection has nine perfumes, four fragrances, I would say three fragrances that really represent our coastal life, which is Sunset Hour, and I think a lot of you know Sunset Hour. Um, Pacific Rock Moss, I'm not sure if you know Pacific Rock Moss. You know now. And Bohemian Lime. So those three fragrances are part of what we call coast-to-coast -coast fragrances. They are best-selling fragrances um, worldwide, and the reason why I'm saying this is not that I'm particularly proud of that, but it's just that these fragrances make so many people dream. If you cannot go to Australia, have one of those fragrances and you make sure that you're, 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 you are in Australia. You, smell, you can actually smell one of our beaches, you can smell um, some of our beautiful rainforests in, in the region of Byron Bay. And if you want something more tropical, well, then you go for Sunset Hour. So, and this is again something that is another trend in perfumes, Claude, is that today I think we have to go back to emotions. Fragrances has been too, too abstract, and I think perfumery is emotions. You know, fragrances, is, it links us to our past, and, and you want to create unforgettable moments with your fragrances. Like, when I travel somewhere, I actually choose a fragrance, and I want to make this fragrance, I, I want to link this fragrance to that particular trip. And during the pandemic, for two years, it was incredible to read the comments of our beautiful customers all over the world saying, well, look, I'm in Singapore and I'm, I can't travel to Australia, but with your fragrance, I'm here in spirits and I'm there in spirits and, and all of that. And it's all about traveling and it's all about emotions. So, three fragrances coast to coast. Then we have fragrances that are slightly more woody, like um, uh, wood infusion and desert rosewood. The desert rosewood is my personal favorite. It, I know sometimes you, you ask me for which one is my favorite. Um, I love all my fragrances, but Desert Rosewood has a very special place in my heart because it is a fragrance that um, every time we make this fragrance, every time we make the, the batch of the, the formula, um, it is always a, a very uh, exciting moment, but at the same time a stress, stress moment because we have an ingredient called Buddha wood oil. I don't know if you've ever heard of Buddha wood oil. It's available here, so feel free after that. You can smell it. Buddha wood oil is, is another native to Australia. It's a wood species, very powdery. It smells a little bit like saffron, slightly buttery, but not too, too overly buttery. And it also smells a little bit like a liqueur. And um, it's very difficult to blend with a lot of other ingredients. So we have cardamom in the fragrance. We have vanilla from the Comoros Islands. We have um, um, amber, amber notes in the, in the perfume as well. And so every time you will notice that this fragrance will change colors. Like sometimes it might be a bit more orangey than more ambery, but that doesn't affect um, the fragrance, it's just the color. Wood Infusion. Wood Infusion is a fragrance that I really recommend you to smell and to discover. It is um, a fragrance that I, I really, really wanted to, to, to create this perfume with a perfumer called Hamid Merati Kashani. Maybe you've heard of him. He is a, a, an amazing perfumer that I've known for many years. He's been working, you know him, of course. Um, he's been working with many different other perfume houses and he's a master in woody fragrances in woody notes mm -hmm. and it was my dream to work with with him and uh, I contacted him many many years ago and he said yes I, I take on the challenge of creating this this perfume for you after I spent some time on an island called Fraser Island have you been to Australia by the way do you know has anyone been to Australia you've been, you've been? okay have you heard of Fraser Island yeah so Fraser Island is the biggest sand island in the world 
Um, there is a beach that is 60 kilometers long. I don't know in miles how much that would be, but 60 kilometers. It's, it's, it's a long, long beach. Um, anyway, it's an amazing, a huge, long island. Um, where unfortunately you can't really jump in the ocean, although you want to, but it's infested with sharks. <laughs> um, but it is so, so hot and humid on that island that even the trunks of the trees, you feel that they are perspiring. Like they, you have the feeling that the trees are literally almost like moist because of the heat. Mm -hmm. And it's the fragrance of the eucalypt and of um, a, a tree called blood trees that really inspired me to create this perfume. So I gathered some sandalwood and I gathered some eucalyptus and sent it to uh, Hamid many years ago. And then we met in Dubai, and I think you were there as well in Dubai in 2018. Um, and that's how we created, started creating this perfume. So I really encourage you to try wood infusion. Um, Velvet Splendor and Southern Bloom with Boronia. Velvet Splendor is based on uh, wattle. Do you say wattle here or do you say mimosa? Mimosa. Mimosa. Did you know that mimosa is native to Australia? It's from the south of France. <laughs> 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 oh, Nicola. Well, no, I challenge you. So, <laughs> I know. so um, it, is, it is a native to Australia and it was imported in uh, Europe and in the US in the 19th century. So there you go. So we have about 300 species of uh, wattle in Australia. And by the way, the Queen of England, if you're interested in that, one, once um, during one of her visits in Australia, she had this beautiful blue gown, um, completely gone with um, mimosa. Fabulous. It's a symbol of Australia. And this is a fragrance, this is a note, uh, a flower or a blossom, I should say, that you actually find in Velvet Splendor. A very bold perfume with opoponax, tonkabine, patchouli, and vetiver. Then we have a very tiny, small collection that I recently created called the Botanical Series. The Botanical Series are, um, the fragrances are in a golden bottle. So there is a third fragrance coming up very shortly. Um, and this is, um, the reason why I created this collection is it's actually a beautiful story and I, I really love to tell this story because it's a story of friendship and sometimes life takes you on a journey and you don't know what to expect and then all of a sudden things happen and, and the magic happens. Um, so long story short, I, I um, read an article in a newspaper many years ago about a company in Australia, in the north of the country, in the tropics, that is harvesting and distilling agarwood. And I'm pretty sure that all of you here know agarwood. We also call it oud. Yeah. Um, and I could not believe it, because usually agarwood, uh, when you know the, the, the story of agarwood, you find it in Laos and Cambodia and you know, Southeast Asian countries. But I found it very strange that Australia would have agarwood. And so I picked up the phone and I called the company and, uh, and these people were very, very sweet and they said, look Dimitri, we would like to invite you to come to a farm in, um, in the tropics, in the north, and we really would like you to, to discover you know, how we use the trees because there is a whole process. You know, you need to wound the tree and then you know, the tree gets infected and it's the infection that turns into a fungus and it's the fungus that you have to, to distill and then you get the oil. Anyway, so Nicola, Nicola, um, and so <laughs> stop flirting. <laughs> um, anyway, so so and, and and I went. I spent the most fabulous weekend in my entire career because it was all nature. You know, these people, they're not snobs. They are just simple people, passionate about what they do, and it's wood. They have a lot of sandalwood in Western Australia, and now they're doing agarwood. And we spent, we spent the most amazing time uh, learning everything about distilling wood, oil. And I'm very happy to announce that today in, in, in our fragrances we have this oil. Maybe just put it somewhere. Yeah, somewhere come on. And um, it is the most organic, agarwood on the planet. So 
but there is no child labor involved because usually what happens with food in certain countries is that a lot of children, you know, they, they, they are easy little little creatures that they use for, for, the, for this industry, which is awful. So in Australia, everything is pretty much controlled by the government. And um, so when I, when I discovered this oil, I thought, oh my God, this is so pure and so beautiful and you know, everything. So I wanted to use it in my fragrances, but I had an issue, is that my fragrances was all about native ingredients and this oil is, or the tree is not native to Australia. So I had to create something else. So I created a collection called the Botanical Series. Um, where I would highlight ingredients that are not necessarily native to our country, but that are processed or grow in Australia, imported and processed in Australia. And this is how I created my first fragrance called Silky Woods. So Silky Woods is um, it's our second best-selling fragrance worldwide. Um, it is blended with the most defined vanilla from Tahiti, um, with tobacco leaves, if you, if you like tobacco leaves, uh, vanilla, uh, sorry, ylang ylang, um, saffron, if you're into saffron, and then, um, and then a, a second fragrance that we recently launched is Purple Sweat. And I love Purple Sweat, I'm obsessed with it. Um, so yes. It's so beautiful. Purple suede is the one that is based on lavender from Tasmania, another one, not native to the country, but it was brought into Australia more than 100 years ago. And today, Tasmania produces the most organic uh, lavender in the world. I mean, when you think of the fact that some places in Tasmania have no pollution in the soil and in the air and in the ocean, that says a lot, and it's the DNA of the of the, the lavender is exactly the same as what we call in French lavande du pays, the French lavender from Provence, but it's grown in Australia and it's a lot more pure. I can tell you, it is absolutely pure. So I'm going to pass on some more. Of you. Yeah. So did you smell the agarwood? Yeah, I'm doing some more for the ones who who didn't have a chance to. The young lady here. Sorry. Oh, pardon me. It's the third one based on. Everybody the third one, oh my god, now you're asking. Um, the third one is based on an ingredient that we don't really know much in, in, in the perfume world. It's there, but it has never really been ex explored, and it's um, a, a, a sandalwood from the South Pacific. It's called Astro Caledonicum sandalwood. It, it grows in New Caledonia uh, or Vanuatu. Um, it's very rare, very rare, but so tropical, very lush, very, very uh, intense. So yeah, another one, it's not native to Australia, but it's processed in Western Australia. Mm -hmm. With the same company, by the way, that owned uh, the agarwood. And is it also gonna be a woody one, or is it gonna be a yes. lushy tropical? So it's a woody, woody vetiver um, spices. No flowers, no nothing, flowers. yeah. Very intense. I can promise you that. <laughs> um, so yeah, so that's basically in a nutshell, Goldfield and Venice. Voila. So if you have any questions, please. I'm here, so... Okay. I do have a question. Yes. Do you find that the, the, the ingredients that you're using for your perfumes, do you find, because perfume is becoming more and more popular, they're coming out more and more scents, do you find it hard to get the ingredients? Is the price going up? The price point's going up on those? Oh dear, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> and the more... Um, and the more um, you work with natural ingredients, but not only the natural ingredients, it's also, it's every ingredient, everything goes up in price. And um, we, have, we have a lot of issues in Australia at the moment with um, climate change. Um, so we have a lot of floods and, you know, like this year, I've, I've, I know now that this year, for example, the Baronia crops have been really, really damaged by, by the rain, a lot of rain. So obviously what's left is 
to us is is expensive. So we have we have yeah we have all that. It, it, it goes up in price enormously, but it's becoming more and more difficult. Even with um, do you find that competitors as well looking to get the same ingredients? That is that a factor as well? It takes longer. It takes longer, and that's why I so much believe in Australia because Australia today is really um, developing new things, new ingredients. They're very um, advanced when it comes to research, and, and so they are already um, doing a lot of uh, experiments with new ingredients. Um, like uh, I don't know if you've heard of um, kangaroo tails, which is a plant that actually stands up when there is a bushfire, for example. It's, it's got a black stem, and they stand up when there is a bushfire. It's incredible. Um, so when you cut the tree in half, I mean, there's like a big trunk. When you cut it in half, there's like a resin, and they are now looking into this resin, and it's got a beautiful smell, and it's got incense in it. So there's a lot of things for the future. So I, I, I just, I just want to use different things than what the majority of the brands are using. So that's. I hope that that was. An it did. Question. It really did because you see, you know, somebody will see something like Sunset Hour, and you're like, how can I get those ingredients so I can create my own and get some of them? That's ingredients. where you're. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be personal. <laughs> yes. Oh, Sunset Hour is such a beautiful scent. Mm -hmm. It was a. It was such a, a joy. We created this whole thing during um, COVID. And I was lucky enough to work with a perfumer called uh, Honorine Blanc. She's based in New York. And she actually came to Australia before COVID. Mm -hmm. So she had her honeymoon there. And so she knew exactly what I wanted. And it was a pleasure to work at distance because we took so much more time to go into the details back and forth. A thousand DHLs and FedExes. <laughs> um, but it was, it was amazing. And I really wanted this fragrance to be joyous and juicy because I knew we were going to launch it post-Covid, so I really wanted this perfume to be, I don't know, to be a, 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 a breath of fresh air, you know what I mean? Like, like joyous, when you smell it, your eyes go up and, and it's like a party, and that's what I want. Because usually in perfumery, and especially in niche, we always tend to be very serious with our creations, but I wanted this fragrance to be absolutely all about joy. So. Up to you now to make a better version of it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yeah. Josh has a question. Hey. Can you go more into detail about the desert peach? What makes it unique? What, how is it different? So, desert peach is. Um, I know where a lot of people because I have I have some images, um, but desert peach is um, is a native to obviously to Australia. It's part of what we call the bush tucker food. Indigenous people have been eating it for thousands of years. Um, that brings oh, luck. <laughs> um, and um, so it's it's literally a very tiny little. It's a tiny little peach. It has there is like a, there is a seed inside. And when you taste it, obviously I wouldn't recommend you to taste it now because a lot of people have been touching it. But as you can see, it's very, I mean, this is dry, but it's very tiny. And when you taste it, it tastes a bit like apricots, like dried apricots, um, pear, and, and, and on all of that. And it's actually, it's used in skincare more than in fragrances. It wasn't so much used in fragrances, but the skincare world, there was a beautiful oil, an, a Kwandong oil that you can use for your skin in your hair, um, but no one has ever thought of using it in perfume, so, I mean, yeah. Until today. Exactly. Yeah, yeah of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay, so earlier you were talking about wanting to see fragrances in other parts of the world, and as we're living in this hyper-connected global world, what advice would you offer to folks in parts of Africa who want to start fragrance? Oh my God, um, come up with, with an amazing concept. <laughs> That's what I would say. Come up with something that is genuine and that really reflects the country, I would say. There's so much. Mm -hmm. Probably 10 times, 100 times richer than Australia, I would mm -hmm. say. So, and by the way, we have Nigerian ginger in um, Sunset Hour. 
so well, there you go. So we have, uh, there is so much. Yeah. If I had the time and the money, I'd definitely go back to Africa and create something beautiful right there. Because mm. there's so much richness. But I would definitely recommend to, to, to create something that is close to, to the country. It's, it's and in, roots. And in terms, of, thank you for that. In terms of like getting started, what advice would you offer? As you talked about working with a perfumer in New York City, for example. Start with a big blank page and start writing down all the things you want to do and everything that crosses your mind. Write it down and then create a scenario and then you know step one, step two, step three. I mean, obviously it's about sourcing glass and. It's about making molds, caps, um, and today I think the, the, the difference is today that everything is so expensive that I don't know if with 20,000 euros you would be able to make it, so I think it would be more a two million dollar thing today, I think. But it's, it's um, yeah, it's, it's very challenging these days, to, to, especially when it comes to production, because things are long, we are even producing some of our sprays for 2024 already, so that's how this pandemic has shaken us up, all of, all of us, isn't it? So, yeah, so it's a long, obviously it's a long process, but I would recommend you just write it all down. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, you mentioned climate change being a big factor in terms of availability yeah. of the ingredients. Mm -hmm. Are there any particular ingredients that are being impacted by climate change and what can one do to maybe help preserve some of these native plants and flowers? Nothing. I think we have to wait until this whole wave is over. I mean, like we have La Nina in Australia. We have these floods. I mean, remember a few years, I mean, everyone was dying. I mean, the whole country was burning. And then literally the day started raining and it did not stop. So I think it's a cycle, to be quite honest. Um, of course, there are a lot of factors that make it worse, climate change and all that, but I think um, we just have to wait and see what, how it will end up. I mean, I, 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 have, I have no crystal ball, so I don't know, but I think it's just a matter of, um, I think we all experienced during COVID that less driving was great, no airplanes, the, you know, the, the air was cleaner. Um, and I think that first year, that, that first year was actually a beautiful year because it was quiet and the weather was quieter as well the first year. I don't know if here in San Francisco, but I found we had very quiet weather and then it started really raining. And so, um, but yeah, I mean, I think if we all contribute a little bit, then, then that's it. Yeah. Says me flying so much, <laughs> I don't contribute. However, I contributed my perfumes. We don't use any plastic, and our cellophane wrapping is biodegradable. How good is that? Mm. Wow. Yeah. Intentionality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So was that an answer to your question? Mm -hmm. yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Hey. You spoke of the role of Bosnes in the, in the name of the, of the house, but what is the continuing role of Bosnes? Do you have any banks like characters you work with today? Uh, Joseph Banks? Yes. Yeah. No, unfortunately not. I had the privilege, actually, in, um, in Florence, there was a house um, on the river, across the river, we have a client in Florence, and they live in this beautiful building, where Joseph Banks actually lived for a while, in Florence. So, I have to go there next time we go to Florence. Um, but, um, yeah, no, at the moment, no, I just keep him in mind, and, and, and that's about it. I've, I've, we've been looking for some relatives, and for some descendants, and but, there's nothing much left, unfortunately. But, but do you work with other botanists today? Have you discovered these new ingredients? Yeah, oh, yes, all the time. All the time. And we have a lot of suppliers in Australia and Western Australia that actually naturally contact us to offer us new things. Um, we have I recently discovered an ingredient called Fragonia. If you Google it, it's not known. It's, it's not in America, but it's called Fragonia. Um, and it's it's amazing. I, I get these things uh, sent to me, and and that gives me ideas. I mean, it's untapped. We've got so much. We have native um, figs. We have um, yeah anything you can think of. I mean, the tropics are so rich and full in abundance of seeds and 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 yeah fruits and pots and and, and 
mushrooms, whatever. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's definitely a big source of inspiration for. We still have enough content for at least what I was saying to Kurt for at least a hundred years. So mm -hmm. I won't be there, but yeah, <laughs> he'll be there. So. <laughs> um, was that a, a no, that? Thank you. See that? Another question? This is my Mattel. What is the plans? Are you planning to expand the brand into candles and body um, rings? Yes, we are. Nature? We are. Candles is definitely coming up because everyone has asked for candles, and so far I always said no. Because why? I mean, look at all the candles. I mean, is there room for another candle? But you know what? I think. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the thing is that people have really been asking for candles because they really want to smell the natural ingredients, like they want to have like Buddha wood in a candle or have Baronia in a candle, and that doesn't exist. So um, um, I started working on it. It's a long process because candle making, I can tell you, if you've ever done it, if you want to do it the right way, it takes years, it is difficult. Um, you want to make sure that it doesn't burn black, you want to make sure that it's good and it's beautiful and all of that. So it's, it's a big job. But yeah, definitely that. And obviously, um, my dream is, um, and it's on the map, it's, it's to expand Pacific Rock Moss with my own shower gel and my own oil and my own uh, creams. And, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very coastal. So, yeah. That's about it. More questions? Yeah. Hi, Jessica. I'm wondering, do you feel like you've created your fantasy fragrance, and what does your fantasy fragrance smell like? No costs. Oh my God, my now we're talking. I think um, my next fragrance that is coming up next year in spring is probably the closest to my fantasy fragrance. We have we have a property in the tropics, all the way up north very rugged and very remote and it's it, the markets you haven't seen anything like it we have the most divine fruits and everything is so in abundance like I was mentioning just before and um, and my, my yes and the whole region has pretty much inspired me to create a fragrance that um, that I wanted in the collection for a very long time um, what else can I say it's very tricky um, and, and, and um, I'm actually giving a fragrance this time, I'm giving a fragrance to something that doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. To a plant that, that is one of the most beautiful plants on the planet that doesn't give a scent. So that's my tribute to that plant. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, so that was actually a very good question because I was, it, was, um, it was something that I wanted to do for so long. Yeah, yeah, and do you think, are you going to creatively recreate what you feel like it smells like, or are you going to use headspace technology? So we have headspace, headspace technology, mm -hmm. and we have one ingredient that is um, coming from very close to where we have our house, mm -hmm. and it's called a red back ginger. Mm -hmm. So it's a native, um, and it's a little bit more... Mm, uh, how do I say that? Um, I'm not going to use the word zingy because otherwise Sebastian is going to sing it. Um, but it's a quite it's quite a unique ingredient mm -hmm. from that area. Um, and then other than that, we'll use a lot of things from the from the region. Mm -hmm. yeah, beautiful. Um, I can't say much, but it's yeah, it's the kind of fragrance that in the summer it's yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you probably are gonna love it a lot, <laughs> but anyway, it's very, it's very personal. Once, once again, I mean, you might not like it, but yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay.